Hey, hi guys. This is Brida. Once again, Rita, as in R I T A. Okay? So, um, I'm here. First of all, let me introduce you guys to this product I'm using. Look at my face, guys. Look at how beautiful and glowy my face is. Isn't that beautiful? I'm not putting on any makeup right now, but I look beautiful. I know I am beautiful already, but I think this is extra, you know. So I'm using this product called Rizari um, products. They have the facial product. They have the body product. They have everything. So because I, I had this acne, crazy acne on my face, that Rizari product has helped me to like remove. And right now my face is back to normal. Look at that. Glowing glowing no makeup guys no makeup but that's not why i'm here today i'm here today um to teach us on something actually somebody reached out to me and said reader please can you help and educate um our younger generation and even the older ones the causes of uti so uti means urinary tract infection and this infection is an infection that happens in your urinary system. It can happen in males, it can happen in females. So it's not really female infection and it's not an STD, but it can be transferred through sex. Okay guys, so just hear me out on this one. So the urine infection, like I said, is ure UTI means urinary tract infection. And this infection is caused by infected bacteria in your system that travels up to your urinary system through the urethra, the pelvic region, and it goes up and causes this infection. So, um, like for us women, all of us has these bacteria, good bacteria in our vaginal region. And the good bacteria are nice, but when the good bacteria become infected, of course, they're going to smell. And when they smell, this causes you to have infection. They accumulate, the accumulated infected bacteria, they can travel up to your um, urinary system and cause that infection. So bacteria, infected bacteria or bacteria can cause UTI infection. So the second cause of UTI infection can be use of public toilets, guys. This is the most common cause of it. When you go to your public toilet or any toilet that is not clean, you sit down on the toilet seat, you pee, and water splash back to your system. That, of course, can cause that infection. Another cause of this infection is when you hold your urine for too long. Holding your urine for too long is not good at all. Of course, all of us, we, we need to drink a lot of water. But when, after drinking water, you have the urge to go and pee. Please do not wait. Go and pee. Because that is the way your system removes the things that can cause infection to you. They are toxins in your system, like urea, uric acid, the creatinine. Those things, when they build up, they cause problems to your kidneys or bladder. And that can cause an infection, of course, and even kidney um, problems. So another cause of this UTI infection can be um, when, um, how can I say? like poor hygiene a lot of people don't know that that poor hygiene can actually cause infection to you poor hygiene in the sense that for us ladies when we wear our underwears panties you're supposed to wear it at least once within the eight hours go and remove it take your shower wear another one but I know that some people can wear underwears or panties. I've seen my patients, some of them, especially the homeless, actually, they wear it for tons of years, months, and those bacteria will build up and will cause infection. But I've also seen like regular people that don't even know they're supposed to wear their underwears once a day or once in 12 hours or eight hours, whatever, however you want to do it. But just try and change it. Take your shower. And when you're washing your vaginal area, please do not use what America called dodging. Some people say, oh, I don't wash my vaginal area with water. Then it's going to cause infection to me. I always dodge. When you douche, of course, douching or douching, Nigerians, we call it douching. Americans can say douching. When you do that, of course, it's going to cause infection. Because when you put your system, your body that, um, your 
vaginal or private part that you've not washed down there in the basin of water, the infection is still going to travel. So the best thing to do is when you take your shower, try to use ordinary water, no soap. Some people are using soap to clean their private area. No, it's not right, especially ladies. Please use ordinary water to wash out the private region. That is the way you're going to be free of this infection. Okay, hi guys. As I was saying, the next one is going to be signs and symptoms of urine infection. Okay, UTI infection. So UTI infection signs and symptoms varies mostly in males and females. But sometimes we see similar symptoms both in male and in female as well. And the first and the most common symptoms that we have in urine infection is the um, dysuria. We call it dysuria, but in common sense, it means painful urination. This happens mostly in males. When they want to pee, the pee is not coming out. And when it's coming out, it's too painful. Like it, they're having this pain as if they, they're pushing out a baby, something like that. It's not really like pushing out a baby, but it's very painful. Okay. And also females, yeah, they have it too. So it's like very painful. Also, they have the burning sensation. You feel like as if you put like the chili down your vaginal area or on, on your penis or something. You put the chili there so because it's burning. It's like very, very striking burning sensation that you have because of that infection. Also, um, the most common one is the blood in urine. Some people see this blood in urine when they pee. You see like little blood inside the toilet. But some people don't usually see it. When you do the test, it's when we mostly see this blood in urine. Okay? You have to see that with the microscope. But in advanced cases, you see that it comes out on the, oh, sorry, in the rest, in the toilet. So another um, signs and symptoms is in female is like the vaginal irrit irritation or the candidiasis. So it feels like itching. And when they itch, it's like so itchy, so like everywhere is it's very itchy. And when they itch, they tend they tend to like scratch it and itch. It tends to itch like continuous itching. That's to an extent that blood will start coming out from your skin because of excessive itchiness there. Okay. So another one is the flank pain. This flank pain usually is on your left on the two kidneys your um, lower back we have the right and the left flank pain okay so it might be only the right side it might also go to the left side as well but the flank pain is also a serious symptom for urine in infection that you really need to investigate to know what is going on okay so another one is the urgency and the frequency to pain some people in you know that have UTI infection they usually have this urgency like you feel like oh my gosh I need to go and pee I need to go and pee you didn't even drink water but you have this urgency serious urgency coming down there like oh I need to pee and when you go to pee you really might not even come out and also you have the frequent you see yourself going to the restroom more frequently because you want to pee because of the urgency and everything another one can be the nausea vomiting it's not usually a common symptom but a lot of people have it especially associated with fever when you have this fever you're gonna have the chills you're gonna have the nausea vomiting all of them can be symptoms of uti as well okay another one can be pelvic pain we call it pelvic pain because it's here under the lower abdomen it can be on the right or on the left or even the suprapubic region that's the middle side of the abdomen the lower abdomen so um that can also be signs and symptoms of uti okay so usually um it varies a lot of people have different symptoms somebody might even have only fever chills you check the urine there is infection right there somebody may have the nausea vomiting they might have um the urgency they might it depends like you know all the symptoms doesn't usually come um at the same time but most times they have more than one or two symptoms as well okay so how do you diagnose the urine infection urine infection is usually diagnosed through a urine test so this urine test is by giving your patient a cup telling your patient please go and get the urine for me you know telling the nurses to 
do the test of course we have the one we call the UDIP UDIP is just um, an emergency one that you can do there in the clinic and it's gonna show you what the patient's urine is reacting to so in that urine in fact um, urine test you can detect blood in your urine you can detect um, creatinine you can detect urea you know anything that can show you that the patient has infection yeah it's gonna be there in the urine also um, you can do urine culture because urine culture will be the one is like a little more advanced than ordinary microscopic urine test. So urine culture is going to be also the one to show you advanced level of UTI and it's going to show you more details of all you need to know that your patient, all you need to know or to confirm that your patient has UTI infection. Okay. So, um, like I said before, UTI is not an STD. STD means sexually transmitted disease or in America here we call it STI. STI means sexually transmitted infection. So UTI is not an STD but it can be transferred during sex. Especially males. The male figures they have this infection carrying it about like they don't even know they have it because most times the men the male um, figures, they don't even have symptoms in case of UTI, unless they have, they have this dysuria or burning sensation, like I said before. But they might not know that they have this infection and they will be carrying it about. Or maybe they have those symptoms, but within them, they're thinking, oh, it's normal. It's normal. They don't want to go check it out. You know, so they keep giving it to their women, to their ladies, to their girlfriends and transferring it. That's how it can be transferred through sex. The ladies can also transfer it to guys, but it's not really um, common. Mostly it's the guys that transfers that to the ladies. Okay. So, and now this brings us to treatment of urine infection. What are the treatments of UTI? What are the medications that you can use, the antibiotics that you can use to treat urine? has UTI what medications are the most effective ones for treatment of UTI infection so the most common one that we usually use especially when the patient is not allergic to that is the Bactrim DS so this Bactrim DS dosage is 800 milligrams slash 160 milligram um, you give it one tablet twice a day morning and night it's supposed to be q 12 hours but twice a day okay um morning and night for 10 days that is going to help to clear the infection from the patient's system from whoever is having the uti infection okay another medication is the nitrofurantian or something we call the macrobide this macrobide is 100 milligrams you can take it like three times a day for three to four days or up to five days okay twice three times a day as in T tid for five days okay we can also use the kefless the Kefless is a very good one too, especially in females that have frequent UTI infection. The Kefless is going to help a whole lot to, you know, quench that wherever the source of infection is coming or to help treat it fast as well in people that have chronic UTIs. So the Kefless is 500 milligrams. BID means twice a day times 10 to 14 days. It's usually 10 days. Okay. You can also give it up to like seven days. It depends. I, me, I usually do 10 days because 10 days works better. You make sure that the infection has been cleared. Okay. Seven days is way too short for me. So I usually give like 10 days and that has been working better and working very well for my patients. Okay. So another medication that can be used that most people don't really know about is the Cipro. Ciprofloxacin is another good antibiotic that you can take. It's a broad spectrum antibiotic because that can help to treat your um anything regarding to the abdominal regions. Like when you have this diarrhea, you can be given Cipro, of course. When you have fever, of course, Cipro can be given. But we can also use it to treat UTI and it works very well for patients with urine infection. And the dosage for the um, Cipro is 500 milligram twice a day times 10 days. Okay, guys, there are some antibiotics in terms of IV that also can be given to patients with UTI infection, like the gentamicin. Nigerians, they call it gentamicin. 
America, we call it gentesine. So this gentamicin or the gentesine can be 80 milligram and you can give it IV twice a day. Some people can do up to three times a day, times maybe seven days, times five days. That can help to like clear the infection from the system. And also you can do the rosefin. Rosefin can be 250 milligram, 500 milligram, 1000 milligram, IM or IV. Okay, IM means intramuscular and then IV means intravascular. So you can also give it for urine infection. So these are the medications that are commonly used for UTI infection and it has proven to work for my patient. Not only my patient, a whole lot of people out there for their urine infection. So another thing that I need to open you guys' eyes is this. When you have UTI infection, please make sure you continue to have your water intake. You need, if you are drinking one liter of water or two liter, make it three now. Because your system needs to flush out all these thousands in the body that can make you to have infection as well. So the more water you drink, the more you go and pee and you're going to pee out all those things. Even the medication is also going to work effectively because your kidney, they need water to function. If you don't drink enough water while on medication, it's going to make the medications to accumulate in your kidney, in your liver region, especially the kidney. And that is going to make you to have kidney problems as well. Because most of the medication, they metabolizes in the kidney or in your liver. So guys, when you on when you are taking any medication make sure you drink a lot of water like tons of water actually in this case of uti infection make sure you drink a lot of water and that's gonna help you help the infection to go away more quickly and also help medications not to build up in your kidneys okay guys so this is it for me today it's just a very short one and a quick one a lot of people have this urine infection they don't even they have all these symptoms i said they don't even want to go check it out they don't even want to see think that this can be a problem all they want to say oh it's normal it's normal it's gonna go away on its own hell no urine infection cannot go away on its own it might subside but eventually it's going to come back. And when it comes back, it's going to be more severe than what it was. Severe means it's going to be more tense. Okay? Than what it was before. So guys, make sure you drink your water. Like I always tell you guys, make sure you do the right thing. Do your hygiene properly. Clean yourself. Eat right. Do whatever you need to do to prevent you from having infections, okay? And also, remember one thing I just said today. If you don't remember any other thing that I said, remember that I said urine infection can be transferred through sex. And also, if you don't treat urine infection, it can turn to something we call the PID. PID means pelvic inflammatory disease. And this pelvic inflammatory disease can destroy your urinary, um, your reproductive system. Okay, so guys, make sure you're doing the right thing. Make sure when you have the symptom, go to your doctor. We are here to help you guys. We are here. I know sometimes it can be overwhelming seeing tons of patients, but still, we don't complain because we love our job. We love what we are doing. So go to the hospital, go see your primary care provider, do the right thing, and then be healthy. Okay, bye guys. Love you all. Bye.